Hi students, welcome to exercise 17, graphing the sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So as we did with the other graphs, what we're going to do is we're going to teach you the parent graphs. So these will be the parent graphs, and then we'll later uh, learn how to transform these graphs. Alright, periodic functions. Um, that's what the sine and the cosine graph would, would represent. Um, it's a function that repeats itself over and over in regular intervals and cycles of its domain. Tangent's also one of these functions, but acts uh, a little bit differently. Um, so basically, uh, things that can be represented by periodic functions, um, I think temperature uh, is a good example. Every year we come back to the same average temperature in June and same average temperature in August. And it oscillates. It goes up to a higher degree in July. It goes down to a lower degree in January and so on and so forth. Uh, the period, the length of the interval over which the function travels, one full rotation or cycle. Okay, so you might have learned this in physics before, if you've taken physics class. But uh, generally, uh, period, if I lose the same, use the same context, for the temperature, the period would be one full year. Because a year from now, we're going to have the same average temperatures as we had today. Amplitude. Um, that is the distance uh, from the normal. So let's say the average temperature in Canada, or in Winnipeg, is 6 degrees every year. And the maximum average temperature in July is 26, for example. That would mean the amplitude would be 20 degrees. Uh, and then the average cold temperature would be probably about minus 16 degrees in the winter, which would make that 6 degrees the average. So the difference of between the maximum and the average and between the minimum and the average. Um, okay, uh, sinusoidal functions, we're going to start with those. Sinusoidal functions are oscillating periodic functions uh, like sine and cos. And let's sketch the two. Um, to sketch the two, I'm going to find uh, in important points. So uh, think about your unit circle. You can take it out if you'd like. Uh, let's find if x is equal to 0, we're going to go pi over 2, uh, pi, 3 pi over 2, and we're going to come back to 2 pi. Whoops, that's to 3. I'm going to come back to 2 pi. Okay, so when x equals to 0, sine of 0 is 0, right? Actually, I'll stay with red so that way we can compare cos and sine. Okay, so when x is pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1. Think a unit circle, right? Sine of pi is 0. Sine of negative, sorry, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And we're right back at 0. Okay, so if I were to put those points on a graph, so at x equals 0, y equals 0, at x equals uh, pi over 2, y equals 1, at x equals pi, sine is equal to 0, 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and 2 pi is 0. Okay, so the graph that we're sketching here is actually the graph like this, and it's cur it curves, it's... It's not, it shouldn't be straight lines. That's actually a pretty good representation of it. Okay, so and this graph continues forever. Because notice that if I continued on this graph, so if I put 5 pi over 2 here, which would be the next interval pi over 2, I'd be back at 1. Because that would be a coterminal angle of pi over 2. Right? And the next one would be 3 pi. And I would be right back at 0. Okay, so if I had to sketch the next two points, it would be here and there, and the graph continues to repeat itself. So notice that this part of the graph repeated here, and then this part of the graph would be repeated right here if we had continued the graph. Notice that this would also continue right here if I was to continue the graph. So at negative pi over 2 and at negative pi, these would be my values of sine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a little arrow at the end here, to represent this graph continues forever on, in that direction. And I'm going to put a little arrow here to say the graph continues forever in that direction. Okay, so let's do the same thing for cosine. So when x equals to 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, again, your unit circle gives you the answers if you take a good look at it. I'm going to continue all the way to 3 pi this time without stopping. So cos of 0 is 1. Right? Think about your unit circle. Cos of pi over 2 is 0. Negative 1 at pi. 0 at pi over 3 pi over 2. 
1 at 2 pi, and we keep the rotation going, right? Negative 1. Okay, so if I were to put those points on our graph, so here, that's where the point would be at 0, 1. At pi over 2, we're at 0. Pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, and 3 pi. So notice this graph has the same exact shape, except that it's translated compared to the sine graph. So if I was to continue the other way, as I did with the sine graph, and this is the graph we get. Okay, so the y equals cos x graph, well that's our graph um, of sine function, just translated pi over 2 to the left. So notice that if I moved all the points pi over 2 to the left, I would get the cos graph. So the cos graph and sine graph are exactly the same graph, just a different translation of them. Okay, some key information and some key notes. Uh, first of all, the two graphs are identical, except for in translation of pi over 2. We, I kind of went over that in the, in the description of the graph. Uh, the two graphs are periodic and continuous. We're considered their sinusoidal graphs. It makes sense they're called sinusoidal graphs because they're the same graph, just different translation. Um, they're continuous, which means they continue to infinity and continue to repeat the same pattern over and over. Uh, and the period of each graph is 2 pi, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you go around the unit circle, you go 2 pi, and then you restart all the values, right? So 2 pi makes sense. Uh, some of the properties of sine and cos. So the domain of each function is from negative infinity to infinity. There's no places where x doesn't exist. The range is between negative 1 and 1. So the maximum value of 1, the minimum value is negative 1. And that uh, has the property of opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side cannot be longer than the hypotenuse. So the, the ratio between sine and cos can only be between negative 1 and 1. The zeros are different because there's a translation, right? The zeros of sine x would be at every single pi, right? So 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So it's every pi. So it's a k amount, so an unknown amount, uh, integers though of pi. And then for the zeros for cos x, um, it's just pi over 2 over, right? So you start at pi over 2, and you add pi every time. So 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, and you get all the zeros for cos. Uh, the y-intercept of sine, this is one we're going to go back to a lot. It's y equals 0, so it actually crosses at the origin. And the, the starting point of cos, or the y-intercept, um, is uh, y equals 1, which starts at the maximum. So cos starts with the maximum, sine crosses the x, uh, the x axis and the y axis. Uh, ma minimum, maximum value is 1, minimum value is 1. That's both true for both. Again, that goes along with range. And the amplitude is 1. So you go up 1 and you go down 1. You go up 1 and you go down 1. And that's what the amplitude is describing, is how much do you go up and how much do you go down for every uh, oscillation. And as we just mentioned, the period is 2 pi. That's the amount of time it takes to go from start to finish, start to finish, start to finish. That distance is 2 pi. Okay, so the quick sketches, um, if I ask you to do a quick sketch of sine x, uh, simply you would go, okay, it starts at 0. You go up and over. So this would be 2 pi, right? This would be pi. Um, if you guys want to add the other two, which is not the worst thing in the world, you go pi over 2, you go 3 pi over 2, and then this would be 1, and this would be negative 1. So that would be your quick sketch of, of, of sine. Cos, you'd have the same thing, except you start at the maximum. So you start at the maximum, and then you finish at the maximum. So this value would be 1. Your minimum value would be negative 1. And we'd, we'd share the same value. So this is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. And this is 2 pi. And so these, I'm going to put some endpoints in here. This is the quick sketch of cos between 0 and 2 pi, and this is the quick sketch of sine between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, and the last one, the tangent function. Uh, the tangent function, if you recall, is sine over cos. So we're going to have a non-permissible value when cos equals 0. Uh, you cannot divide by 0. So what happens there is an asymptote. We learned last year in grade 11 pre-cal that whenever you divide by 0, there's an asymptote that's created. So um, let's look at the same kind of values for tan. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm even going to add a point here. So let's go with 0. 
And then I'm going to go to the pi over 4s too. So we're going to go pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, uh, 5 pi over 4, 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and 2 pi. Okay, so those are just all the points I'm going to find. Uh, tan of 0 is sine of 0. And again, if just take a look at your unit circle. I'm just going to kind of sketch one right here just to help with the visual. Right here, it's y over x. y is 0, x is 1. So therefore, tan is 0. Okay, at pi over 4, they have the same value. So tan is simply 1. At pi over 2, this is where we get into trouble because it's y over x, and x is 0. So this is undefined. So it's undefined. Indetermined. Um, 3 pi over 4, we have negative 1. They share the same value. At pi, we get 0. At 5 pi over 4, we get 1. Right? At 3 pi over 2, we get another undetermined. In should be indetermined, eh? That's my Frenchisms. So this should be indetermined. Uh, 7 pi over 4, uh, which is negative 1. And pi over 2, or sorry, not pi over 2, pi, uh, 2 pi, which gives you 0. Okay, so let's sketch it. I'm going to put my asymptotes in, uh, in blue. So there should be an asymptote at pi over 2. So there should be an asymptote at pi over 2. There should be an asymptote at 3 pi over 2, because that's the division by 0, right? So you have two asymptotes there. And I'm going to plug in the other points. So at 0, you have 0. And at pi over 4, which would be the midpoint between those two, you get a value of 1. And don't forget, we always go towards the asymptote at when you get close. We'll get to that in a second. At 3 pi over 4, which is about in the middle of this, which is here, you get negative 1. At pi, you get 0. At 5 pi over 4, you get 1. Uh, and we're going to repeat that pattern. So that pattern is repeated. Notice that if we kept repeating the pattern, we'd have an asymptote at 5 of pi over 4, 2. Okay, the shape of this graph is actually like kind of a half parabola and don't forget you're always going towards the asymptotes okay so what I, the best way to explain it is yes it crosses one but this shape is what generally what you want to see um, this is the first quadrant between zero and pi over two this is the first quadrant and you know tan is positive in the first quadrant so you know you're going to go towards positive infinity so and it's kind of like a half parabola here okay so same thing over here this is the second quadrant pi over 2 and pi, and tan is negative. So what you see is you see your tan function going to negative infinity. Tan is positive in the third quadrant, so you go to positive infinity. Tan is negative in the fourth quadrant, negative infinity. Uh, this is back to the first quadrant, right? 0 to pi over 2, 2 pi over 5 pi over 2, that's the first quadrant again goes to positive infinity. And notice that this pattern would continue both sides, so you have an asymptote there, you'd have this. And that's how you sketch pi, uh, tan. Notice that I could sketch another one over here if I wanted to, and that would get go over here. Okay, properties of tan, the domain, so notice that there are non-permissible values of x. So x is all the real numbers, except that x is not equal to pi over 2, and any intervals of pi. Notice I used n here. Uh, usually I've used k. We can talk about it in class, but generally it's just a variable to represent a, a certain amount of uh, pi, or integers uh, of pi. So adding pi once, twice, three times. The range is negative infinity to infinity, so it goes all the way down, goes all the way up. Maybe I can try to keep that gra graph in here. Uh, the zeros are all the zero pi, two pi, three pi. So it's just a, a num an integer amount of pi, so 0, one, zero pi, 1 pi, 2 pi. Y-intercept, y equals 0, so we cross there. The period is actually only pi here. So notice it only takes pi to repeat the same function. And the equation of the asymptotes, well, it's basically the same as the non-permissible values of x. right? So x is everything but these values, or that's what the asymptotes are. So those two equations should be the same. Okay, that's it for this, and these are all the parent graphs of sine, cos, and tan.